Hello everyone, Dr. Kimball here. Okay, you are wondering if you have herniated a disc. What is going on? And you're, you're searching through YouTube and Google and, and you really don't know what's going on, but you know something's wrong. So, how does, how does a herniated disc usually show up? Okay, here's this is just my experience and take it for what it's worth. I've talked to thousands of patients and operated on thousands of patients that have had disc herniations and I'm very familiar with the story. This is typically what happens. Sometimes, not all the time, there is an event that occurs and uh, it could be um, jumping off of a, you know, a picnic table or jumping down just a couple feet and, and not, you know, using their legs to recoil. It could be carrying, uh, you know, a bag of cement or a bag of you know fertilizer to your your garden. It could be lifting a pipe, or it could be shuffling snow. Any of these things, even stepping off of a curb. Now, listen, I'm not trying to tell you that you should be worried about going out walking, because if you're going to herniate a disc stepping off a curb, it was going to happen no matter what. There's no way you could avoid it. But there are some things that you can do to avoid it. So, think before you started to have the symptoms that you're having, which are likely low back pain and possibly leg and foot pain, what did you do? Was there an event that you did that you stressed your low back, some sort of activity that would put some sort of compressive load or bending at the hip without bending the knees? That is a setup for putting a significant amount of pressure and stress on your disc and the annulus, which is the outer layer of the disc. So when you bend over, and your pelvis stays flat and your spine is bending, you're basically putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the disc annulus and putting it in a, in a moment where it's exposed and able to tear and at risk for a herniation. So people typically after one of these events will feel something a little odd, a little sharp pain, a little tightness in the muscles. A lot of times this happens at the gym. They'll feel that pain and kind of, you know, a little bit different than before. Something's just a little bit different about it. They're really not sure, but you know, they, they get a massage or, or stretch it out a little bit. And then they go home and they feel okay and they go to sleep and they wake up the next day and man, their back is still hurting. It's not the same as it was, you know, the last time this happened. And then that back pain kind of persists a little bit and they do some stretching and maybe some massage, take some ibuprofen. And then over the course of a couple days, that pain will migrate down into one of their legs. That, that pain in the leg is what we call sciatic pain. That is a sign that there's a nerve now that is irritated. How does a nerve get irritated? When it gets pinched, when you steal its real estate, it doesn't like to be touched, it doesn't like to be compressed, it, doesn't, it likes to have all the space that it wants. They're very, very finicky and they're very, very um, delicate structures. And so when a nerve is compressed by some bone or fracture or disc herniation, most commonly, it starts to get ticked off and it starts shooting aching, even electrical like pain down the leg. All right. It can be constant. It can be throbbing. Most of the time it's not burning. There can be some numbness associated with it. A typical L5, L4, four or five disc herniation will affect the L5 nerve and that will typically go down to the lateral aspect of the calf. If you pay attention and it goes down to the toes, it might go to the great, the big toe. If it's an S1, L5, S1 disc herniation, it might go down the buttock, down the back of the, the thigh, down the back of the calf, and then down into the lateral aspect, even the plantar bottom of the foot. So you, could, you might not get it down into the toes, but you might. Um, not every body and all the electrical circuitry and everyone's body is built exactly the way that you know, Gray's Anatomy demonstrates it. So everyone's a little bit different. But if you're noticing back pain starting and then a migration over a couple days into uh, one leg, there's a pretty decent chance that you have a disc bulge or a disc herniation or somehow in some way you've irritated a nerve. Okay. If that's happening, don't worry. It doesn't mean you have to have surgery. There's lots of stuff that you can do to try to calm that down. Listen to some of my other videos and hopefully that'll give you a little bit of insight. But be careful what you do and don't go out 
and lift a bunch of weight, do what you did in high school. When something was sore, you just went out and ran and did a little bit more, or you went back to playing football, you need to give this a little bit rest. And you need to get on some sort of anti-inflammatory medication or steroid that can help calm down that nerve. Talk to your doctor about that. They'll provide you some insight.